What's up, Collateral Cinema fans? This is our podcast shout out for this episode. And we are shouting out a podcast by some pretty awesome YouTubers, pretty well known guys as well. And that's the Sardonic Cast featuring Ralph Seppi, aka Ralph the Movie Maker, Adam Johnston, aka Your Movie Sucks, and Alex Beltman, aka I Hate Everything. It's a fun show to check out, especially if you love those YouTube channels, which, by the way, I highly recommend you go and check out their episodes. They're really, really cool. And the podcast is a lot of fun as well. So check them out wherever you get your podcasts. And with that said, on with the show. I'm Bo Maddox. I'm Ashley Chancellor. I'm Robert Ortegon. <laughs> I'm Dakota <laughs> Chancellor. This is Collateral Cinema. Welcome to Collateral Cinema, the only movie podcast that matters, where we focus on good movies, bad movies, and everything else in between in the world of cinema. We're podcasting straight from somewhere in South Texas, and yes, my friends, we are a 420-friendly podcast, so whatever you have, be it dabs, be it blunts, be it bongs, be it joints, smoke it if you got it. And welcome to our special anniversary episode. Two years on, ladies and gentlemen, and we are excited to be here. We're excited to be close to 5,000 downloads. Hell yeah. Oh man, that is so awesome. What do you think, Dakota? I think that's pretty awesome as well. Hell yeah. And you'll probably hear that for some reason Robert Ortegon is not here. I don't know why he couldn't celebrate our anniversary. Robert. Motherfuckery. Yeah, our meek aversary, I should say. Our, our meek aversary, yeah, exactly. That's going to be a collateral cinema tradition from now on. Exactly. We're going to do Takashi Miike movies every anniversary. And there's plenty of movies because the dude directed over 100 movies. So, Oh, yeah, literally hundreds of movies. Like His output is mind-boggling. I mean, I think that we've talked about that on some of our other episodes uh, regarding Takashi Miike and his movies. Yeah, we definitely did it our uh, our last anniversary special on Each of the Killer. And, and of course, our pilot episode, which you can find anywhere you get your podcasts, which doesn't have all the people that are here on the show now, unfortunately. Yeah, that was uh, quite a different setup, starting from our pilot episode, right? Oh, yeah, de- definitely. And we did Ichi the Killer last season, and the pilot episode was Audition, and this movie is quite possibly one of his most wild movies out there. Probably his weirdest movie, I would uh, say. Oh, yeah, you know, incest, we got it. Yeah. Lactation? Look no further. Necrophilia. Necrophilia. <laughs> uh, plenty. All the necrophilia. Scat. Jesus. You know it. We got it all. That is, ladies and gentlemen, Takashi Miike's Visitor Q. Yeah, I've had this movie for quite a while now. I've had it for close to 10 years. <laughs> this came out in 2002. I maybe found it maybe roughly... 2007 2008 and from what i understand the copy that i have is a collector's item because i mean th- this movie it wasn't really released that widely outside of japan and everything it's not real well known i will put it that way and takashi Miike is known somewhat you know throughout the world for some of his more um more well-known works uh, and this one's a little more obscure and Honestly, I'm, I'm surprised because this is definitely the wildest film from him I've seen so far. It's not even the wildest film I've seen from him. Okay. Honestly. I mean, there's some of his movies that while they're not entirely as disturbing as this or as Ichi or Audition, they're still real mind trip material, you know? Yeah, I agree. Lots of lo- and, and he even has some straightforward Yakuza films and he has... Uh, he has Yakuza films that are out as out there as Ichi the Killer as well, and he even has other different types of genres. But like I said, we've gone into that a little more in depth on some of our other Takashi Miike episodes. But this movie started as part of a Japanese filmmaking initiative, which was meant to 
showcase digital video, which was at the time kind of in its infancy, at, at least good digital video. Yeah, yeah, and that, that comes through here. You can see the novelty uh, of digital film, you know, as a new medium, but also the quality, I guess. You know, it, it, it's it's really got that um, that found footage quality. Yeah, it, we'll get a little more into the found footage elements of this uh, picture here in a little bit, but I mean, I, I don't really recall what the other movies were that were released as part of this initiative, but... I remember seeing some of the clips on YouTube and everything, and I mean, a lot of it looked pretty interesting, but I mean, not nearly as penetrating and thoughtful as this movie. Yeah, but. this movie's got all of the elements of a shock film, you know, except it's, M Miki never does shock for the sake of shock. There's always some kind of social commentary behind it, and even if it's kind of hard to wrap your brain around, that, that's definitely still the case here this this movie is no exception to that oh i mean definitely and the digital video of that time i mean it's it of course it's nowhere near what we have now we have like ultra 4k recording just on our iphones right like 1080p yeah that's true i mean we we can do 4k video on the iphone now yeah and it's been that way for several versions now from what i understand yeah yeah, no, it's crazy. We were um, we were filming with you know Robert for um, his his uh, short film, and I, I was honestly surprised by the clarity and the quality that we can achieve with that medium now. Yeah, but I mean, it still has a little bit of that charm that you know this movie has a little bit. What what we filmed, kind, yeah. kind, kind of uh, aesthetic wise, right? Like if you look like the aspect ratio, you know, the the size of the camera, yeah. And, and he was using pretty high-end digital technology at the time, but at, at that point in, in the early 2000s, you just didn't really see a whole lot of movies being made with this type of technology. And you still don't. I think most filmmakers still prefer to use, uh, you know, 35 millimeter, right? A lot of them prefer to do it. I mean, it, it just depends on what type of feel you're going for. Right. Like some people will go with like 16 millimeter, I think, or sometimes a higher millimeter. Right. But what people, is that size for? What's up? What is that sizing for? The millimeter? It, it, it just kind of gives a different uh, aspect ratio, a different uh, frame rate and everything. You That's know? interesting. Yeah. Have, have you seen Gozu? It's a, another Mike film. I have Gozu. <coughs> you do have Gozu. In, okay. th in fact, that's probably going to be next year's. That's what I was. <laughs> that, that's going to be next year's Mike anniversary movie. I believe so. It. No, d don't look anything up on that movie. Don't because, look it up? No. Okay. Don't, don't spoil that movie because... I mean, I might even show y'all that movie before we even get to our anniversary next year, but no, that's going to be something really interesting to get into, especially but that ending. What about 13 Assassins? I have that movie as well. That's more of a straight-up Chinbari film, mm -hmm. more or less. It's a samurai movie. He did uh, Phoenix Wright, oh, yeah, video, uh, <laughs> video game adaptation, and recently JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Yeah, only he could bring JoJo to the big screen. As far I as can I'm see concerned. that, definitely. O only Takashi Miike can do it because his vision is just that unique. Yeah. But he he's also done lots of children's movies. He's done, like he did a movie called The Great Yokai War, which was really cool. Wait, I mean, I, I don't know if we've gone into any of this on the previous episodes. Like I said, we have talked about his previous work we, we've discussed his filmography before but there's just so many films that i wouldn't be surprised if there's some that we've missed i mean there's no way we've got them all oh oh yeah i mean he has other trilogies like like shinjuku triad trilogy and the i'm sure we mentioned dead or alive yeah the dead or alive trilogy which is fucking fantastic i love it yeah I, from it, what it, i've heard i mean the, the three movies are not related in any way other than having the same starring actors well it's supposed to be like a reincarnation kind of thing from what i understand that's okay. kind of how it, it works with dead or alive but of course i mean this movie is more of like a slice of life family drama gone absolutely batshit yeah and it's really based off of a movie that a director named Pier Paolo Pasolini did. He, he did Solo or the 120 Days of Sodom, which I might bring to the podcast next season, and you're going to have to see it, and it's not going to be pretty. 
<laughs> you hear that, Dakota? I don't like the sound of that. Oh no, you you will. <laughs> That's that will break you people. It'll break the both of you. This movie was pretty fucked up, I got to say. Yeah. But I don't know. I think Ichi was more fucked up than this one. But maybe maybe that's just me. Ichi is just way more stylized though, yeah. to me that it it just doesn't come off as disturbing. This movie to me is more funny than disturbing. Yeah. This I didn't want to yeah. watch it though. Like that necrophilia shit like I had to look away. I honestly I I don't know. I just I couldn't watch that <laughs> shit. I mean, there's just that you know the the best part in the whole movie the whole the moment that made me just go what no 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 yeah. is the part where you know he's fucking the corpse right and then then all of a sudden he's he's realizing that she's wet and he's like oh 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 it's the it's the miracle of life you know and uh-huh. um and of course he's saying all this in japanese which somehow just makes it more hilarious and then he <laughs> pulls his hand up and there's shit on his hand actual oh, yeah. feces and that that's why she was wet, and then his dick gets stuck inside of her because of rigor mortis. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll, we'll discuss uh, the more disturbing elements here a little later, but the digital video, at least the from the uh, point of view um, shots in this movie, it was pretty much kind of uh, proto uh, found footage, wasn't it? Yeah, it definitely has aspects of found footage. I mean. Found footage in and of itself, I I think kind of needs to be 100% shot in that style, I think, to be considered a quote-unquote found footage film. But certainly there is elements of that. Yeah, I mean, this this movie uses elements of digital video in a found footage style, and it also kind of intersperses it with uh, just still shots as well, like especially yeah. in the very first scene, you know, the, the incest scene. Yeah, I remember that. I mean, you have the the daughter. She's using a digital camera to continuously take pictures of the whole situation. And you see those pictures kind of interspersed here and there, in, like weird. in certain frames. You know, it, it's very slow too. The beginning, you know, the the pacing there. Um, it's interesting because the whole first half of the movie kind of is very slow paced, and then all of a sudden, just chaos ensues at right about the halfway point. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's supposed to kind of have that slice of life feel to it, which is a genuine uh, genre of entertainment in Japan, like both with right. anime and live action. You know, and whereas like Audition was kind of like a romantic family drama gone wrong, this is just a yeah. slice of life series gone wrong. I mean, Dakota, have you ever watched any types of anime like that? That it's just kind of slice of life. It's just basically a day in the life of a particular family or a particular character. Like, I really don't watch anime. Ash is the weeaboo of the family. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, have you have you seen any other like TV shows or movies that might fit that realm a little Maybe. bit? Maybe I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Like. I mean, I don't know. There's like the Cosby Show. Yeah, oh, Malcolm in the Middle. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not <laughs> yeah, I don't sure. know. I'm not sure we should bring up the Cosby Show because you know Cosby's a fucking creepler. Yeah, yeah. but it felt oddly appropriate. Oh my god. <laughs> so oddly did you know Hogan and Thor? You know who Hogan is, right? The the Asian guy. Uh huh. Um, the Asian guy. That's that's Ichi, the same actor. Yeah, oh, I do. Oh, yeah, no, no, uh, Kakihara, Kakihara, not Ichi. It's yeah. Kakihara. Yeah. The guy who That's plays who You're plays right. the uh, he plays Kakihara in uh, Age of the Killer. Oh, okay. he's uh, he's he's in he's the MCU Hogan. films. Yeah. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah he's he's in oh, the Thor films in particular. No kidding. Yeah. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. He he he's done a little bit. Uh, he was also in this other movie. What was it? I can't even. Uh, hold on a second. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to look for, Dakota? Mongol. That was the movie he was in. Oh, okay. Mon- right. Mongo the Rise of Genghis Khan. Yeah, he was in that movie. Oh, it's actually probably wow. his biggest movie. Wow, really? When did that come out? 08, I think. 07. Oh, oh, wow. Nice. So, ever since the early 2000s, like, I mean, we touched upon it a little bit at the beginning, but, like, how far has digital video come since then? I mean, like, like we said, we pretty much made a fucking movie ourselves. Like uh, Robert and I, we made it just on our iPhones. It's certainly more accessible. And I, I think maybe that was kind of the point with digital film to an extent. And maybe what this film sort of satirizes? Yeah, maybe to an extent. I mean, it, it, it kind of satirizes the intimacy of digital video in a way. There's a real intimacy to yeah. it that's kind of really subverted a bit, you know? Yeah, I know what you mean. And of course, this film, I think, has that feel. I mean, I think 
we were noticing him in particular, and there's that one scene where you, you can see the boom mics in the shot. Oh, that 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 happens actually a few times throughout a the movie. A few times. Yeah. But in particular, I remember one time when we've got the the mother in the room, right? Yeah. And and you mentioned this, and I said, well, well why would they need a boom mic in a room, you know, where the, when there's just no, there's no sound. It's a completely silent scene. And you brought up a good point that for, you know, acoustics, um, you want that that stuffy room ambience. You want that room ambience. I mean, in, in reality, no room is truly quiet. なかなかわかりませんでした。でも今やっとわかりました。それは怒りでもありませんでした。悲しみでもありませんでした。あそこが感じてしまったんです。あそこが感じてしまったんです。あそこが。この音ちょっと。ええ、ほら。いじめにあったのですけど。よいしょ。これが。ほら。いじめにあった。俺もらえない。ええ、ええ、ええ、ええ、ええ、ええ、ええ、
And if you look closely, she's doing a puzzle of what looks like a happy couple or family or something like that. Right. Yeah. She's trying to piece. She knows that her family is fucked up and she's trying to piece it together again. That's really what that puzzle represents. And then Takuya comes in angry that she she apparently got him the wrong toothbrush, which is like, kid, you're old enough to go buy your own fucking toothbrush. Yeah, I know. The little, little fucker. And what does he beat her with? He beats her with a rug beater, which in, in Japanese culture is very much seen as a wifely tool. Right. It, it's a wifely and a maternal tool. And he has a bunch of them. He has a, all yeah. stuff in the closet. Yeah, he, he, he has a closet full of them. N- neatly stacked away. Yeah, neatly stacked away. It, it's, it's almost like he is purposefully taking what makes his mother maternal and everything and just using it against her. Yeah, that's a good point. But, you know, it's interesting, too, because Taki has got a story of his own, like every bully that is themselves suffering from something. And in this case, um, yeah, it's almost a reverse situation because he's Literally. the one being bullied. Yeah. And that's why he takes it out on his mom. Which again, obviously, doesn't justify the behavior at all. Well, but yeah, yeah, obviously. But it does give you more insight into the character and why he's doing what he's doing, and, and that's immediately, you know, succeeding that. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's 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 in one. It's in that single scene. Um, suddenly, these kids start throwing fireworks in the house. You know, which torments the mother more, Keiko. I don't think that it really torments the mother. It, it gives her a moment of respite, honestly. It, mo- it gives her a moment to get the fuck out of there. Yeah, oh, that's true, bit. too. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it acts as a cover. So those kids, can, you know, her son is actually afraid of those kids. Oh, you know deeply I mean? afraid. And and, it, and it's interesting that they attack him when, like, it's usually right after he's beat his mom and when yep. he's wearing that mask. It is when he's wearing the mask, yeah. See, that to me is another interesting element of Takiya's character is the mask that he puts on. Yeah, I'm not sure what was going on. And, with and that. then, but you justify that there, there's a scene where Keiko is putting on a facial mask. She, she's putting on a, a mask in order to try to be more womanly, to be more maternal and everything. But even in spite of that, he still comes in and beats her. You know, you even see her with, with that with the mask still on, and she's getting beat by her son. And then shortly after that, you know, a little more chaos in, ensues with the bullies, I believe. I think so, anyways. <laughs> I might be mixing up scenes, but... It's easy to do that. Oh, very easy to do that. <laughs> and then, you know, you've got Keiko, of course, shooting up heroin. Yeah, the heroin use is a factor in this movie, like even going up to the end of the movie. Well, we're going to go ahead and get into that here in a little bit, but it, it even ties into the first scene because that's why her daughter is whoring herself out. Because she's got a habit that she's got to keep up. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a repeating cycle. Yeah, and, and that's a constant theme of this movie is cycles. You know, cycles of violence, cycles of abuse, cycles of uh, addiction. It's like that plays out over and over throughout this movie. And ultimately, that's, you know, the disjunctive factor here with this family. Not all the crazy shit that happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the problems that everybody would have when the family starts doing, you know, the crazier shit, that's actually when they come together. Right. Yeah. And and that's really the, uh, the mitigating factor really with the visitor being there. I mean, and and, and that's why you kind of question whether he's really real or not in a way. Yeah. Because I mean, he's, he's almost like this force of nature that kind of, is just unfurled on this family in order to, to force them to kind of, you know, get their shit together, you know, and, in a and, sense, but also, <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, they, they, yeah, it, by losing their shit, they get their shit together <laughs> pretty much. That's what I'm saying is they have what seems to be, you know, actual like real problems in society, which brings them apart. And then all this bad shit in scene sequence of events that brings them together. It's weird. Exactly. It, it's a dysfunctional, functional family. <laughs> well, it starts off very dysfunctional, you know, but I mean, the visitor is the catalyst for all these changes that occur. But I mean, yeah, changes, but like not good changes. <laughs> this motherfucker's a necrophiliac now. I mean, his wife is a drug addict. His son beats his mom. And then what kind of fucking yeah, but man at, is this? His but, daughter's but, a whore. But at the <laughs> end, they all come together, right? I mean, yeah, they're, they're, I mean that, that was together. The, they're, they're, they're together by sucking on our tits. That's not together. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> No. You, never, you never had some titty milk to go? 
Well, I mean, it, it's the symbolism that's important there, and and mother's milk plays a huge role in this movie. Needless to say, what what is it with Japanese people and lactation? No, well, no, 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 no. Not needless to say, needlessly. Okay. Well, what there was there was a whole the, the the floor was covered in milk. It was like an inch of milk on the floor. While the time she was done squeezing her nipples. Well, yeah, that, the sun that's, was laying in the pool of milk. Well, th- don't you get the symbolism there? It, it's all because it's her. I don't care about the symbolism. <laughs> what the fuck? She's like it's liberating her. herself. She, she, she's she's re she's reestablishing her role as the matriarch of the family. Okay, that's just it's disgusting. That and that, there's an additional layer here when you consider that a lot of these things are fetishes, taboos. Yeah, they're very much taboos. Right. Get but, a new fetish. But I mean, the, the mother's milk, it, it's, it's all meant to show that Keiko is really trying to be the anchor of the family. I mean, her, her husband is unemployed. I'm sorry, like, but she's, guys, I mean, am I the only sensible one here? You guys are crazy. If you think this is normal. I'm not saying this is normal. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just trying to interpret what's happening in the movie in a cinematic sense, you know, because you. you have to here. You, you There's, yeah. With Mike, I mean, there is an underlying theme here there's there's a message there's an allegory we just don't always know exactly what <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it's very much about the dissolution of the japanese family it's especially around that time they were coming out of the late 90s which was a pretty severe recession for japanese uh, for the japanese economy at that time if you go back and look at a lot of the media from that particular period i mean you can see it in the anime and the movies I mean, that recession played a huge role in their culture and in that particular zeitgeist. It, it, it's why, like, it's part of the reason why the husband is, uh, the dad is unemployed. It's really because he got goddamn sexually assaulted on camera and then they decided to fucking run it. He decided to run it. He decided to run it. He was That's the one That's the impression it. I got. It, it might actually make sense because. It, it's pretty apparent that the father is really kind of into humiliation. I mean, right. And that's another. He doesn't care because obviously because he kills the motherfucker and then videotapes it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, shit. Yeah. I mean, he, he's really lost any semblance of his humanity in, oh, in yeah. so many ways. But he's also a very traumatized person. You know, I mean, he, he was pretty much digitally penetrated. You know, I mean, th- th- he was sexually assaulted himself. And physically penetrated. Yeah, physically penetrated, yeah. Physically, definitely. Yeah, Ooh. with with a microphone. Which, like for for an audio engineer like me, it's just like, oh uh. god damn. Mm. No, that, no. That does not sound like fun. Oh come on, Bo. I know what you do in your spare time. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. God damn. <laughs> so I, I take it that the more disturbing elements of this movie had some real impact on you, especially you, Dakota, because you're kind of beside yourself on some of this. Crazy <laughs> shit, dude. Oh, like I said, I can't wait to show you Solo. Oh, fuck. <laughs> but no, that that's pretty much required professional film nerd shit right there. You know, honestly. with, with Takashi Miike, it's always breaking the boundaries of the extreme. It's like, how far can you push cinema? Well, that's the thing. It's not always like that with his movies. I mean, his movies have so many different flavors to them that you can't really... I mean, you can watch like 10 of his movies in a row and not see the same thing twice. Well, no, I'm not saying... I'm not arguing with that. Definitely, yeah, his movies yeah, yeah. have so many... range in so many different genres. But I'm saying there is a an overarching theme with a lot of his movies. Yeah. I mean, this this is a recurring aspect well, I mean that that's just part of being an auteur, you know. You have yeah. certain uh, certain things that you fall back on, like certain type of themes, certain type of uh, shots and techniques, and, and think certain about ways of directing your actors, you know. Yeah, and think about what his most famous films are or are infamous, you know. What is he most notorious for? Well, he's notorious for the wild, over the top, stylistic yakuza thrillers or the weird ass horror movies that he makes. Yeah, like, well, I mean, he straddles the line of horror in many respects and this movie oddly enough is categorized as a horror film by a lot of people which it's not it's it's black comedy but the movie is so disturbing that it belongs in that category of asian horror i think well i remember seeing a video just the other night on the subject and the thing you have to uh, realize about the whole asian 
uh, extreme thing is that that's very much a marketing ploy. It's not so much a genre. It's more of a broad marketing term for pretty much any type of Asian cinema that might be skew a little towards the scary, horror, extreme, exploitation type of side of things. Yeah. I mean, and that usually covers movies from Japan, from South Korea, from Thailand, from... You, you know, from Vietnam and whatnot, you know, it's mostly just Asian cinema. And even over there, they have a term for them based on their rating system called Category 3. And I mean, if, if anybody knows anything about extreme horror in a sense, you'll know what Cat 3 films are. And now a word from our friend Chaz Rab at the Trial by Error Variety Show podcast. Hey, Collateral Cinema listeners, Chazzle Dazzle here from the Trial by Error Variety Show podcast. Just taking a few seconds to invite you guys over to what we do. Much like Collateral Cinema, we are a grassroots podcast. We invite bands from all over the world to come in, and we dig deep into their souls and find really cool stories to tell you, and there's tons of music every week. So subscribe to us wherever you subscribe to your podcast. We look forward to having you. They're pretty much like... In, in Japan, that's anything from just a basic R rating to like porn, you know, like they, they pretty much just have the broad uh, rating for that. Well, that makes sense because all porn in Japan is censored. Yeah, which is strange. I and mean, we see a, a lot of that general censoring in this movie as well. I mean, that, that's Parts a of it customary ones, thing. And some them. are not. Some of them. Yeah, some of it. I mean, I always understood that it was a pubic hair thing or something like that. They don't like showing pubic hair in public. Then shave your genitals and you don't have to worry about it. I don't know. But, of course, that led to all kinds of interesting things in Japanese culture. Like, for instance, you know, tentacle porn and whatnot. You know, that old thing. Yeah, that, that seems to be the only thing that's missing here. <laughs> yeah, with, with, with naughty tentacles. That's the only thing this this movie needed. <laughs> no, it did not need it. It this needed. Movie was oh, already come over on! The top. You know it would have been better with naughty tentacles. No, visitor Q two, <laughs> visitor R, visitor R, <laughs> visitor R. We were both thinking about wait, what's after Q? I know. <laughs> we're like, wait, not P. Visitor R. Oh my god, what would that movie be like? Um, Miserable. I mean, I mean, you know, would the visitor still be in it? I guess so. You'd have to. He'd be have to be some kind of yeah. om- omnipotent omniscient character yeah. it's I a mean, whole new cast it's just the visitor is yeah. i mean i mean takashi miki has made sequels to his movies even prequels before like th- there is a live action ichi prequel it wasn't done by miki but you know it is out there there's also an anime for ichi there is an anime for ichi yeah there's a lot of cosplay for ichi i could probably cosplay for ichi dude you that should totally pretty, pretty you should easy. totally cosplay as ichi. that's so easy yeah uh, this halloween you should totally cosplay that's as ichi. such an easy cosplay but man, what, what's what was your, f- what was the one scene in this movie that stood out to you guys? Like, like Dakota, what was the one thing that really stood out to you? Probably the necrophilia. The necrophilia. Yeah. yeah, we haven't even gotten to that. Yeah, there is some corpse fucking that goes on in this scene. We, we, we talked about it a little earlier, you know, going into the, you know, the corpse fucking and all the shit and everything. That's. That's literally all the shit. Um, That's that's where this movie took a turn towards chaos for me. Like, and I knew it was coming. Yeah, I did my due, you know, diligence. I did a little bit of research on this ahead of time, which I almost wish I hadn't because it would have been that much more shocking. But, but, um, but no, like I knew it was coming, and yet still, when it happened, you know, I'm sitting there and I. Funny thing is, I can think of one other Takashi Miike movie that has uh, some necrophilia in it. It's uh, Full Metal Yakuza, which is an interesting movie in its own right. Kind of a sci-fi Yakuza ro- you, Robocop mashup. Kind I think of. you tried to show us that once at your house. Really? I think you might have had it on once. No, I, we, we'll definitely do that in the, yeah. in the future, man, because that's actually a cool early Takashi Miike movie. Bo, you watched this with Robert. What did Robert think about this? Oh, God. He, he Robert, talked to me about it, too. He said this is crazy. Yeah, Robert was just like, what kind of rapey pedo bullshit did you just show? <laughs> what kind of fetish shit did you just show me? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like dude, we've seen like two of this dude's movies <laughs> on the podcast. Well, uh, technically, he's seen one, uh, you know, Ichi the Killer. I actually, I didn't watch Audition, and I wasn't on there, but when I was doing the video version of that podcast and throwing it on YouTube, 
I was able to watch what I believe is is the most disturbing, you know, part of the movie, the, yeah. the most memorable part, the, that one scene, yeah, the that, corpse fucking scene, uh, you know, the equivalent of that, you know, <laughs> yeah, pretty much like the piece, the piece de la resistance, like if I, there you go, I was looking for the yeah. right word, I didn't want to say crux, because it didn't have anything to do with the name, but, yeah, yeah, but anyway, so I, I feel like I, I saw what I needed to see out of that, yeah, but you still got to see the entire movie, because, I mean, it's, pretty much a subversion of romantic comedy tropes it's really awesome you're a subversion of romantic comedy tropes oh i'm a total subversion of romantic comedy tropes especially on valentine's day fuck well we're right in time right <laughs> yeah yeah we're, we're actually two hours in we're actually two hours into <laughs> valentine's day isn't this almost like an appropriate movie to do for valentine's day kind of absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you thinking no no you know, no, 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 no shut no, up no, no. this is not an option necromantic necromantic should be that's the ultimate valentine's day guys movie. you guys have horrible tastes and i am so <laughs> glad that i am not <laughs> your valentine's day date and I feel bad for whoever may potentially be your Valentine's Day date because Aww. that is miserable. Oh, come if on. If I saw this movie on Valentine's Day date, if, if a girl saw this movie, they would probably not talk to me ever again. Oh, ever. no. I, I would, I would, watch, I I would watch something romantic, you know, like Antichrist. That's a perfect Valentine's Day movie. <laughs> <laughs> perfect Aunt Valentine's Day movie right there. And you're going to be single for the rest of your life. Hey, that's fine. At least, I, at least I watch badass movies. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> that, that's fine by me, man. Dude, show, Wait, show of hands. Who, show of hands. Who hasn't gotten pussy this year? <laughs> Wait, we can't. We can't. We can't. We can't show our hands. They can't. Little show your hands. It's <laughs> well, well, well. We're we're only like what two two months into the year. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's plenty of time then. <laughs> plenty of time, bro. Plenty of time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We shouldn't shame people for how much sex they do or don't have. Yeah, sex shaming is wrong. So is kink shaming. Yeah, you whore. <laughs> Which, I mean, yeah, there's all kinds of kinks in this fucking movie. I'm sorry. I have to kink shame when it comes to yeah. necrophilia. Yeah, that's yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that, no, that, that's justifiable kink shaming. Well, I mean, if you know anything about uh, guru porn on fucking uh, on the internet, it's like that's kind of a thing in Japanese culture. It's like, and that even goes more extreme with it. Like, but you know, like, 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 think in, think a death metal, like a Cannibal Corpse album cover, but just anime. That's pretty much in porn. It's pretty. That's pretty much guru. I won't be watching that. No, it's not. It's not pleasant. Not at all. You know what? You you know what is in porn though? Incest. It's just a thing now. You almost can't kink shame it because you know everywhere yeah. you go. You know, it's I, I mean, I will say that. Yeah, you're my stepbrother. Well, 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 here, here's what I will say. Okay, so the first half of the movie, the only thing that was really, really questionable, I guess, I guess I was, was, was the incest. Yeah. But I mean, even then, it's like I can find that on Pornhub. You know what I mean? Like first half of the movie, oh well. But you get to the last, you know, well, like then, third of the movie, and you're like, what the fuck's going on? And there's yeah, necrophilia and, and other and, scat and other and, shit. And, is and, this. and then you're you're introduced to lactation uh, sex, which is that. incredible. Even, <laughs> even that, that's if not you've been lactation exposed tech, sex. That is like over excessive amounts of whatever no, synthetic wh milk wh wh on the floor. Once again, go, go, go look on Pornhub for about five seconds. I mean, okay. Like, seriously. Incest, <laughs> we've all seen it. It's actually kind of like a, a thing now, and especially in, in, in Japanese porn, right? Yeah, in hentai, yeah. right? Lactation, yeah. if you've been exposed to right. any Japanese porn, you mean, you, again, You've seen it probably, right? Yeah, it's kind of weird, yeah. but you know, it's it's not it's not pushing the boundaries yet. It's just weird, right? But when you get to the corpse fucking, okay, <laughs> when you get to that two girls one cup shit that happens, <laughs> oh, and I my. mean actual shit, two girls one cup is fucking kind of tame compared to that. Honestly, I think. actually, yeah, but it's so humorous. That's what's great is we're talking about this, and you know when he when he's fucking a dead body and she starts shitting it's hilarious i i kind of have a theory about uh, what that's supposed to symbolize hip course fucking that's pretty much him kind of How about trying to him symbolizing him literally fucking a corpse i mean what else is there to get from that what do you it's, get it's, from it's, that bo it's him trying to reestablish his sexual prowess as a man that's what you, you know, get from that? And, I see him and, fucking a corpse. And, 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 and it's also him kind of reestablishing his his actual paternal role within the family. 
because you know yeah. re- remember he can't he he comes early like he he completely fails at being a man like okay. he, even fucking his own daughter he fails at it you know he what? fails at being a father and he fails at being a man and he fails at being a husband and as he's, well he's insecure about it you know yeah, it's the thing yeah. that he mentions well you know when he murders that girl in the first place he's like you know is it is it because i came too early and yeah, that that's just the the catalyst for all of his frustrations, all of his, you know, his, his sexual impotency that he feels and everything. Yeah, I don't know. All I, honestly, I, I just gotta say, I, I I I don't understand. How can you find symbolism in, in just necrophilia? Because I, it's I, a Mike film, bro. I, <laughs> it's again, like you're supposed to, dude. I mean, Solo is a fucking fucking goddamn work of art I love and it is Mika's it's great. disgusting and, and again nec- necromantic what? necromantic is 100 percent allegory right what? it's 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 all about uh, post-war germany that's what yeah. that's what necromantic is about it's 100 percent uh, post-world war ii germany there, there's even straight up like a kind of fascistic imagery that's kind of satirized in that movie you know, and there is there are movies that are shock films for the sake of shock. I mean, you looking at a Serbian film or Human Centipede. Well, well, even even the directors for those movies would argue that there's a point to what they're doing. Even Serbian film that's supposed to be about the Serbian conflict throughout the late '80s and early '90s. Oh, we know I, that's bullshit. I mean, I I don't know if y'all ever remember that happening and when the old when old Yugoslavia broke up. You know, in Serbia, and they went to war with Serbia and Bosnia Herzegovina. It was a very fucked up and brutal time. Where, yeah, you know what, rape, rape was weaponized against you know innocent people. You know that shit happened, and that's kind of why they went extreme with a Serbian film. I, I'm not saying that 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 they achieved that. I'm not saying that that you know the movie actually really excels in that respect, but. I mean, even even the director of that movie would say that there's a point to it. It's just, do we get that point through with all the horrible shit that's in that fucking movie, which we're not even going to get into. Mm-hmm. It's best we don't even get into because Dakota might, you know, have a fit. Uh, I'm, Aneurysm. <laughs> I'm already am. This movie, this movie itself is crazy. He got his dick stuck in her, dude. She was dead. <laughs> don't you get, don't you get the humor in that? And his wife helps him. <laughs> his wife. His wife is all his lactating wife. <laughs> and which sh- his husband doesn't even, you know, her husband doesn't even make, make make her lactate. It's the random invisible guy, visitor guy who comes to the house who's omniscient, apparently isn't real. And then we got a lactating wife, a beating son and a fucked up father god he's fucked up there's something there's wrong with that's so everybody there's something wrong with everybody <laughs> there are no normal people in this movie there's not a single one well that that's the point it, the point is the dysfunction of the family and, and it's a dif- dysfunctional in such an extreme way that i mean it finally just kind of crescendos and goes over the top and then at the end it just kind of settles into into the family no, kind of mending settle. their bonds. It doesn't that, settle. That, that's that's what the ending of that movie is supposed to be. Whenever no. you know the father and the daughter, they're sucking no, on nothing Keiko's, is settled. They're that nursing is not, on Ke- Keiko's tits. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what that settled. is. That that's is what that settled. is. I have more their questions at the end are, of that movie than I did before the movie started. Bo. <laughs> <laughs> nothing is settled. <laughs> I have more questions. <laughs> Oh, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I'm having fun with this episode. <laughs> I quit. I, 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 no, don't leave. Don't leave. This motherfucker. I mean, this is why I wish Robert was here, man. He would be having a blast with it. <laughs> He'd be having a blast with all of this. <laughs> well, it's okay. He doesn't want to be here. So, you know what? You know what, Robert? If you're listening to this, I fucked your mom. Oh, once again with the with the motherfucking. I you mean, know Jesus. what? It's it's, it's, it's like, our are, thing. You're, right? you're gonna you're gonna get us canceled somehow. I, I, I just know somehow motherfucking is gonna get us canceled. Why would that get us canceled? Okay. I don't know. It just will. We're respecting each other's mothers. <sighs> I, it, okay, I guess that's respectful. All right, that's fine. If I don't do it, who will? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God damn this podcast sometime. I swear to God. I swear <laughs> to God, man. We're, we're talking about exploitation, okay? We're talking about Visitor Q here. And, and you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, T- talk about getting canceled over an edgy joke. <laughs> yeah, we've already talked about worse shit <laughs> already in we've this in this episode, including literal shit. Literal shit, exactly. I don't know. I mean, I've heard that there's there's stuff out here that's that's worse than this. I mean, look at like 
what like vomit porn movies. Oh, there, there's a uh, there's a, a trilogy of movies uh, made by this one dude named Lucifer Valentine called the Vomit Gore trilogy, and it's it's exactly as you think it is. It, it, it's 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 a uh, first movie is known as Slaughtered Vomit Dolls. Yeah, yeah, vomit. That's what I was thinking of. Okay, not vomit porn. Vomit gore. That's what they call it. It's pretty much vomit porn, just really kind of gory and style. All right, moving on. So, um, <laughs> Mike. Uh, do you know any other movies <laughs> he's <laughs> one made? As the gods will, that one wasn't that bad. That one was a good one. See, I As wasn't freaked the, out. That one was just was was trippy, well, but that was fun. I I wasn't freaking out after that one. Well, that 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 was one of his manga uh, adaptations. Was it really? Yeah, that that was adapted from a manga. Really? Wow. Same I thing with that was the, great. Same thing with Ichi the Killer. I think that he has a sh- parody of Super Sentai shows called Zebra Man. You know, kind of like you know Power Rangers, BR right. Troopers, that sort of thing. おかわり。はい。Zebras in America. Zebras in America. My hooves. <laughs> yes, listen to our Freddy Got Fingered episode, by the way. It's fantastic. I mean, there's all kinds of interesting themes throughout this movie. I mean, we touched on some of them. Like, for instance, the whole matriarchal versus patriarchal thing and how Keiko and her husband kind of reestablished their roles in that family through really fucked up ways. But oh, you know the, the symbolism is there. This movie was actually particularly empowering. You know, from a feminist perspective. Yeah, I mean, it, this, it's a woman who is a victim of serious abuse. And in a way, she maintains her... Uh, what's the word? She maintains her own autonomy Choose your over words carefully her... carefully here, Bo. She, she, she reestablishes her autonomy over her body, over her sexuality. I don't know if she overcomes her heroin addiction, but I mean, by, by this, a certain point in the movie, that's, that just becomes not even that big of an issue. No, and in, and then the father just continually gets humiliated. So <laughs> yeah. it's interesting. Well, I, his overarching character theme is failure, just yeah, outright right. failure. I mean, we touched about on that earlier, but I mean, it, it is also humiliation. Like for instance, he's he sits in the car at one point, clearly traumatized, and watches the incident that led to him being laid off from being a TV reporter. You know, which was his assault from those three. Uh, those three teenagers, you know, and if you know any, once again, if you know anything about Japanese culture, you know, they've always had kind of a thing with their youth delinquents, you know, like, I mean, hell, they made a movie Battle Royale, which is kind of based on, yes. you know, the the rise in juvenile delinquency that was happening for a little bit in the, you know, when looking up this oh, movie, that's what uh, Hunger Games kind of basically came yeah. from. Oh, the, the Hunger, Hunger Games yeah, fucking ripped it off. Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, that's exactly what that was. It, but um, Battle Royale, that was, you know, when looking up this movie and, you know, any other Mickey movie, uh, Battle Royale comes up. 
along with other movies like uh, what's another one? What did I see on here? There, there, there was a bunch of good Japanese movies on here. They can't even saw. Akira. You know who else comes up a lot when I search up Mike films? Who's that? Noburo Iguchi. Oh shit! Who who, who did he do? What movies did he do? I think uh, Zombie Ass. Oh, what? No, I can I can bring up some other interesting Japanese directors like Shinya Sugimoto. He did uh, another great kind of disturbing movie called Tetsuo the Iron Man, which is this really crazy, almost like Eraserhead style, like Japanese uh, art house movie. And it's really fucking cool. It's got lots of different types of techniques. Like it's got stop motion animation to it. What movie? It's got it's called Tetsuo the was, Iron Man. Tetsuo. I was yep, just Tetsuo this right up, there. That's the other one that pulls up on every that, is that a, was the movie I was thinking. That's of. a badass fucking movie. And it's yeah. on shutter again. Tetsuo. So. Yeah, that was the movie <laughs> I was thinking of whenever I look up, you know, any of the Mickey movie, I get Tetsuo, which yeah. is not even by Mike. No, no, it's by Shinya Sugimoto, who, by the way, if you remember in Ichi the Killer, he was a uh, Gigi. He was the uh, old man in the tracksuit. Oh. That's Shinya Sugimoto. Oh. Got it. Yeah. I think you mentioned that, too. Yeah, they, yeah, that's him. And another interesting director from Japan is a man by the name of Sion Sono. And he's done some interesting movies. He did uh, Suicide Club. I was just all oh, that one too. Yeah, Suicide Club, and he did another movie that kind of gets into some really twisted family dynamics called Strange Circus, which is a really, really Strange almost Circus, yeah. almost Mike esque kind of movie. What but about even oh, deeper than Mike? You know, I was gonna say, I'm glad you brought up a racer head because Takashi Mike is actually sometimes compared to David Lynch. Yeah, I mean, his movie Gozu is pretty much a an homage to David Lynch movies. Because yeah. I mean, it it, ha- it almost feels like Japanese Twin Peaks in a way. If you know what we mean, Twin Twin Peaks. Oh, you've never seen Twin Peaks? There's two other Mickey you know what? movies. I th- I've seen plenty of Twin Peaks in my life. Oh my, oh my god, god, that's terrible. There were two other Mickey movies that popped up when I when I looked up you know movies like this, and that was uh, Izo. 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 That is a really crazy movie that kind of transcends time and space and reality. And it, it has a lot of Buddhist symbolism and Shinto symbolism to it. It's got like some uh, uh, allusions to like uh, Japan's uh, military and Japan's uh, government and everything at the time. It, it's a really complex movie. I should have said three movies actually. And then there's a uh, what is it? Fudo. I got that Fudo movie as well. Fudo. Fudo is really cool. It's is another it? kind of yakuza movie, but it's based on a bunch of high schoolers. Yeah, that's a really cool movie. And then his comedy, uh, Dead or Alive. Yeah. Action comedy. I, I have the first one. Like the the entire Dead or Alive trilogy is on Shudder. I highly of recommend course. everybody yeah. watch that. I mean, especially the first movie, it is just it becomes delirious. It's just so fucking awesome. Should we just do all three of them together when we get to that? You might as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah when we do the Dead or, Dead or Alive, we'll do the whole trilogy. Oh, Rainy Dog. Rainy Dog. I have that movie as well. I saw that on here too, yeah. I have Rainy Dog. I have Ley Lines. He did a couple of movies called Young Thugs, which was kind of more of an autobiographical movie, kind of uh, about his childhood and about the, you know growing up a little bit. What's Cold Fish? Cold Fish, that's another Sion Sono film. Sion Sono, I, yeah. I have that movie, but I haven't actually sat down and watched it yet. It's funny. You know the name. You know all these movies I'm bringing up. Oh, I do. I, I know all about you know Japanese cinema and... All these Cat 3 movies and shit. You the know? happiness of the categories. See, that is actually interesting because that movie is kind of seen as almost a companion piece to Visitor Q because really? it has some so, uh, some similar themes to it. I've seen right. that. Yeah. yeah. You know, how, like for instance, it's another family where the main patriarch is kind of down on his luck and, you know, the uh, Japanese economy is kind of affecting the family in a way where they, they're forced to kind of make money and... Lots of chaos ensues, but in its own right. But yeah, I mean, those are all really cool fucking movies, dude. Really, really cool movies. Now, what did y'all think about the visitor himself? Like, what what are your thoughts on that character? Honestly, he, there wasn't much to go off of. He didn't really do much. I'd like to think that in a way, the visitor is meant to be the movie watcher. 
Yeah, he, he, he's, I guess. He's, like he, except he's not like really reacting to them in any negative sense. He's just kind of observing everything. Except in a way. when he needs to knock him upside the head every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. He literally, <laughs> he literally knocks knocks sense into yeah, exactly the father. I guess and, the we it is the viewers, it is the watchers because they're there to just knock him upside the head every once yeah, in a while. You know, it's like I mean, yeah, we're watching the depravity go down, and he's just kind of on the. He's kind of on the fringe of it all. He's even isolated from it. You can even see it in some of the shots in the movie. Well, like there's shots, there's shots where the visitor is visible through like a hole in the wall, and he's kind of separated from the family. He's separated from the father and from Keiko, the mother. The and, visitor is kind of this omnipresent force. He's this ubiquitous element. Yeah. In the film, this this titular character who's always there and always involved. And yet we don't learn really anything about him. Yeah. And and he doesn't really like encourage any of this shit from happening, you know? He doesn't dis encourage or discourage, and yet it's kind of like he's given the credit for it. Yeah, I mean you're right. I mean, he does very little. And yet he's just but, kind of the catalyst here. Yeah. It's interesting. Maybe there's some kind of allegory here with people's you know, uh, a attribution to God in in events, but maybe you know God is just there. Well, like even the the child, the the son, he said, "Were well, you here to fuck up my family?" Basically, yeah. Well, did, were you here were to, you destroy, here to my destroy, family? destroy my family? And he was like, yeah. "Thanks." <laughs> and he kind of just inflects that himself, and then the visitor neither uh, affirms nor denies that. Right. So it's just kind of interesting. You're, you're left as a viewer wondering, you know, is that the case? Did the visitor come destroy them? Did did he bring them together? Do we can we even understand what's going on here? <laughs> what was with that fatherly figure type thing he was doing with the with boy ta too? with Takia? Yeah. yeah, like asking about the sisters about the sisters' room and what everything. The hell, that was weird as shit. Well, I mean, in a way, maybe that's what Takia needed. He needed a father figure to kind of console him a little bit. Because well, his... God knows, you know, the father in this movie is completely incompetent. He's incompetent. He's completely out of touch with his family. I mean, for fuck's sake, he sits there and eats calmly while his son beats the shit out of his mom. It, it's kind of these um, caricatures of our worst fears or of our stereotypes. You know what I mean? You've got the father that's afraid of being incompetent and not being able to provide for his family. You've got the mother that's afraid of just being a passive and, you know, not being able to piece together the family. You've got the son that's prone to anger and the, the daughter that's, um, completely absent from everything other than a few it, scenes. Yeah. Not only that, but you know, daughters in society are kind of, shunned from being sexual yeah yeah and and you know be using their bodies and and having control of their lives and in a way her being a prostitute juxtaposes yeah in, in a way she has that kind of control over herself she does you know i mean it, it's it's i don't even see it as a negative attribute i mean yeah she ends up fucking her dad for money but i mean I in mean, the end, that that that's that says more about her function as a sex worker more than it says about her as a daughter. I think, right? That speaks more to that experience and a little more. She treats him like a customer. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, fifty thousand, you know, yen for to to fuck me, and then when he comes too early, she says it's now it's a hundred thousand. Oh yeah, she's a businesswoman. <laughs> she's an entrepreneur. Honestly, straight straight up. She's got business sense. She's her own boss. Now, what did y'all think about the actual technical aspects of the movie as far as the acting and the directing and the actual cinematography? Well, we saw concerned? some boom mics, so yeah, clearly it wasn't mics. that great. <laughs> well, I mean, this was made for a very small amount of money. In, in American I'm money, sure. it was made for less than $70,000. Oh, wow. Well, that's yeah. a very low budget film. And yet, oh, Tommy was so spent $8 million on the room. What I the know, fuck? right? <laughs> <laughs> Give Takashi Miike $70,000 and he makes something like Visitor Q. <laughs> it's like oh my god only only takashi Miike could do that though he only he's the only one that can have that talent and that know-how to really put together a production in that short a period of time with that little bit of money Damn. and still still make it cinematically relevant 
Yeah. You know? Imagine, give him that $8 million and see what he'll do with it. I mean, <laughs> I, I really like the actors in this movie throughout. I mean, the dude that plays the visitor is really fucking... Like he, he he's very nonchalant. I mean, he's not like influencing anything. But you know, like like I said, he's meant to he's meant to be the movie goer, the movie watcher. Right. He's meant to be us, the spectator, the spectator. Yeah. I mean, I really I really like the actor who does the uh, the father as well. He's very over the top throughout. Yeah, the whole sure movie. is. <laughs> and he fucks the shit out of that corpse. God damn, he does. And and the actress who plays Keiko, the mother. I mean, she imbues a little bit of humanity to her performance you know i mean i think honestly she's the best actor out of the entire cast honestly yeah so was the corpse did they actually use the female or do you think they used a rubber body after a while i don't know i I mean i I wanted to say that was rubber because it kind of looked like it but that could have been a really good actress i mean don't get me wrong i think that i I think they wouldn't have had the money to fake that like that so she probably you think we had a good enough actor who was letting that i think happen to her i think that she was just that good of an actress dear god poor lady wait wait, guys guys no she's brave are you kidding me (laughs) <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. The the, the scene where uh, Keiko uh, injects her husband with heroin to get him out of the corpse. And Don't the, know why that works. Oh, got it. Oh, got it. ありがとう。ありがとう。ダメだ。私の知り合いだ。しばらくこの家に住むことになりますから。続けなよ。俺のこと無視してていいから。Oh, I mean, he's he's instantly just like, oh, I feel great. He's just relaxed. I'm great. Yeah. Then, oh, it came out. <laughs> oh, look, it popped out. <laughs> and everybody's laughing. It's just the greatest thing ever. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. It's it's actually a very joyous moment. And that's when not for me. That's when the family comes <laughs> together, like we said. Yeah, that that's when their marriage is saved, pretty much. And he says, you know, when was my wife? My wife wasn't this competent, except when we just married. And then there's that moment where they're murdering their son's bullies, and they smile at each other, and then they start there's, hacking the bodies apart. They're including just, they're just so content with each other now. Yeah, it, it's uh, you know, it, it's it's family fun. It's fucking psychopaths. <laughs> Hey, you know what? You wanted you wanted to see those bullies eat it, didn't you? Oh, of yeah. course, man. They deserved it. Honestly, I thought she killed her kid, dude. I thought that knife was in her kid's head. I didn't no, realize that he was no. still that. I saw that coming, actually. Honestly, he deserved it after the he, way he, he treated deser- her He kind of deserved it in a way. I thought she killed him. I was like, you know what? Go you. Kill your own kid. But no, well, I I, I like sad. how she reestablishes dominance over her son. Like she after does, after the lactation scene, like she's pretty mm-hmm. much putting on a feast, pretty much to thank the visitor for yep. doing that to her, pretty much because it, yep. it, it seems like a very liberating thing for her. Yeah, and 
like he throws a bowl of hot liquid at her and she's like, not in my face. And she goes, she grabs a knife and a cucumber in a very suggestive scene, chops the cucumber. Like, uh-huh. And it's, it's very much set to look like an erect penis. Yeah. And then throws the knife at her son, at her son and then takes a bite out of the cucumber. It's like you're em- emasculating her son. Straight up emasculating her son, which is interesting because in a way her daughter emasculated her father at the beginning of the movie. I mean, that, that was it was an interesting juxtaposition of scenes there between parent and, and child. In and, both and, scenarios. And both scenarios still had a sexual element to it. Yeah. I mean, it was very much a sexual humiliation slash emasculation. You know what's interesting is I did notice that the son was left out at the end. T- Takya wasn't... Um, it was weird. He but gets he, kind of his own scene, his own catharsis. Yeah, but he's laying on the floor... In, and his mother's, in his breast, mother's milk. breast milk, like an inch of breast milk Wait, in the entire room. Like, what's isn't, the fuck? isn't that kind of appropriate? To, no, appropriate that's inappropriate for, for, for his character arc. I mean, he's in his mother's milk. He's he's finally accepted his mother as a matriarchal figure again. But I'd like to say that that is the definition of inappropriate. <laughs> Be that as it may, that that's the symbolism behind <laughs> and it. And there's that's some him. piss in there, too. Some they, piss this movie doesn't, right. this movie doesn't miss any marks. That's right. She was she was lactating and pissing at the same time. I forgot. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> dude. What y'all is y'all going think on? y'all think that was piss? <laughs> it was yellow. It didn't look like cum. I don't know. I think she was getting more pleasure out of that. Oh, uh, you're right. That's she out. did have an <laughs> orgasm in that scene. I guess that's what that was. Yeah, she, that was her orgasming. See, you don't sure. even know what it is. Exactly. It's well, what the fuck. You well, wouldn't know what that leaving uh, looked like. Well, it, it's interesting. I saw, I, I forget which YouTuber said this, but there was a YouTube reviewer which said that throughout this movie, like, you kind of know what's going on, but it's so disorienting that you don't know what's going on at the same time. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, you're constantly in a state of confusion throughout this movie because, Absolutely. I mean, you're seeing this, what, what starts off as a slice of life just devolve into this kind of sexual chaos. The very first scene is the daughter fucking her dad. I, I don't and know even, if that's even, slice of life. And even, but, nope, no slice but, of life. But it, it's, it's still kind of shot in a way that's not meant to be fully titillating. But it's then, just yeah. it's more of just like a fly on the wall type of thing. It, it it's, is. It's because he accidentally left the camera filming. Right. And it's interesting, too, because, you know, supposedly that's more common than you think it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I shudder to think, but. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Wait, wait a second. Why was that even a big deal in the movie? Then why did they make that an issue? Him filming it. It it's to establish his own incompetence and his uh, failure to, and just the overall theme of failure involved with him. You know. Okay, but like, like that it, didn't. Even, that, 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 I figured it would bite him in the ass later, but it didn't. No, it, it actually doesn't. No, I mean, in, in the only other allusion we have to that scene is when Keiko is trying to. Get 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 busy with her husband, and she smells his. She smells his dick. And puts her mouth on his dick. Then tastes she's it, like, she looks realized, at him funny. He's like, no, then you're you wrong. See, and then you see flashes of uh, his daughter from the scene before. Yeah. yeah. And then, what, but even then, like that's all you get of that. She doesn't question it. They go to sleep, and you don't hear about it ever again. And the end. And she yeah. doesn't question she that doesn't her question husband that has her. his dick stuck in a corpse. Doesn't question no. that. No, she, no. In fact. The next scene, which you would think would be, oh my god, like what the fuck? No, the next scene, literally, like, cause he goes from fucking a corpse to he's in the bathtub and his wife's helping him out and get put warm vinegar well, in the tub. I'm kind of wondering how much of that was kind of heroin induced, maybe. Well, it was she, she had just <laughs> injected herself? Yeah. She goes to the store, go is super happy to go get some fucking vinegar, comes back, pours it on her husband's dick. Well, yeah, I mean, she. I mean, once again, that's part of her reestablishing her matriarchal maternal role in the family. Right. That's what that is. That it, like, especially going out and shopping for something to help her family out. You know, that's a very motherly thing to do. She and, even makes a second trip to the store later, right? Yeah, yeah, to get the deodorant to, to deodorant. Yeah, to uh, take care of the stench of all the corpses that they have at their house now. <laughs> <laughs> that they had to pile up in a tarp in the back seat. To yeah. potentially chop up for the near future. Yeah, they, they were going to do it one by one. One by one. And yeah. chopped them up in pieces. And they already had them, the you know lines on the check already. So they were ready. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the low budget here, I mean, it, it's really kind of interesting how they pulled off something like the lactation scene. It's like, 
that looks very real. I mean, it's all practical effects. Mm -hmm. It's practical effects, but I mean, it's almost like she's really lactating that much. I mean, I doubt of, I doubt that a human could actually probably lactate like that. But no. I mean, it's very exaggerated. But that it would be interesting to see how they actually filmed that. Especially, yeah. especially near the end where she's in the kitchen with the with the trash bag over her and everything, you know, it's like how did they actually do that? It's like I mean, did they have some type of apparatus on her chest for it? Like I, I don't know. It's probably what the what porn actors use in bukkake scenes. Oh well, like, yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> That's pretty much that. That is, it's like a mother's milk bukkake kind of. Moving on. See, no, that's another no, interesting angle. Is that it's almost it's almost like a reverse bukkake in a way. Not and interesting. Again, female empowerment. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, Dakota is so squicked out right Cut now. Cut this episode. No, Stop I'm not it cutting now. it. I'm not cutting it. Damn you want it you want to be a professional movie podcaster? You have to watch shit like this. You have to. We got to do Cannibal Holocaust. Oh yeah, right. I, I right. have that movie. Closing thoughts, Bo. Yeah, I, I guess Yeah, now would be the time to go ahead and go into our closing thoughts. We'll go ahead and start with Ash. What are your final thoughts on this movie? First thoughts coming into this movie is, what the fuck? Um, further thoughts into this movie was, what Mika the fuck? is actually kind of a genius. Final thoughts, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Pure what the fuck. But this movie definitely has some actual points to it, right? It does. Like I said, there's nothing that Mike does that's purely for shock value. There's there's a social commentary here, and sometimes I'm not quite sure what that is, but I know it exists. Well, there, there's also that allusion to a, 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 the Pasolini movie. And yeah. It, it, it's called a Taroma. And in that movie, a mysterious visitor shows up at this uh, aristocratic family's house has sex with every member of the family, father, daughter, son, and uh, and mother. And the maid. And then and the maid. And they all fucking uh, just completely go ex insane, except for the maid who seems to kind of become like a Christ figure or something. Yeah, I, I was looking something. into that, yeah. So it, it definitely, I think, was inspired by that. But it's kind of its own thing, too. Obviously, this film is not for everyone. Uh, <laughs> but if you consider yourself a cinephile, if you consider yourself someone who wants to see the, the boundaries of filmmaking be pushed and, and is interested in not even necessarily just exploitative films, but... The darker side of cinema. Yeah, and, and, and I want to say the, the beauty of that kind of a, a style. Definitely, and also Takashi Miike fans. Obviously, this is probably the one Miike film that, if um, you're not sure, this may be the one to stay away from. But at the same time, I don't think it was that bad. It just honestly was just it was just ridiculous. It was just honestly hilarious. <laughs> it's a very funny movie, and, and to me, it gets funnier every time I see it. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> And, and I've already seen this movie quite a few times. Like I, I watched it initially when I bought the DVD years ago, and I was just like, "Whoa, what the fuck!" Imagine uh, being a kid and watching this. Oh my god, I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Dakota, what are your final thoughts, man? Uh, I don't know. I can't think. After this movie, <laughs> I can't think after this. No, just at least give give us a gen, just a basic opinion. I really, honestly, didn't really like this movie. You didn't like it, really? No, I couldn't really relate with it, bro. I was okay. Don't get me wrong; it was funny. I was laughing. I will say it did get me laughing. Yeah. What the fuck, man? What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so there's some things that are just unnecessary. That lactation, what the fuck? That was like... Well, I explained to you what the so lactation was about. I know what it was about. <laughs> and I can get the symbolism all day long, but is it really necessary? There are other ways to symbolize that. I, I don't think necrophilia has any any reason to be in a movie. Oh, then I need, <laughs> I, I need to show you Aftermath Genesis then. Oh my god! Yeah, uh, this is yeah, crazy. I need to show that to you. <laughs> oh man, I'm going to have so much fun with my movie collection with you guys. So much fun. No, it honestly wasn't wasn't that bad. It was fun, fun, interesting to watch, but at the same time, it was a little overboard, and I had no clue what I was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, I can totally see that. And my final thoughts. I love this movie, honestly, because, I mean, it, it, it has so much symbolism going on underneath all of the craziness. 
I mean, Mike, it, it shows Mike's true talent as a filmmaker. Just the fact that he took a $70,000 uh, production with digital cameras and still made it look good, made it sound good. It's like it's rough around the edges, that's for sure. But it still has all of the thematic elements that he usually goes for. You know, like, of course, like bodily fluids is one of those, you know. And, and it has its own kind of undercurrent of uh, themes of failure, of incompetence, of trauma, of bullying, of abuse and cycles of abuse. I mean, it, it's, it's compelling in that way. It, it's, it's, a very, it's almost like a sociopolitical movie in a way. You know, yeah. it's very sociopolitical. I could see um, that. But I really recommend watching this movie if you're able to find it. I mean, it's like I said, it's kind of a collector's item. So it's one of those Takashi Miike movies that's kind of hard to find. I couldn't find it on the internet. Yeah, I had to get help finding this. I had to ask. Yeah, I and I bought this movie years ago when it was like ten or eleven dollars. You know, so I mean, I I had no idea they had become a collector's item like that. And honestly, I, I'm pretty sure that the copy that I have is a is a collector's item. Yeah. You know, so. Damn. But I highly recommend watching this. This is amongst Takashi Miike's finest works. It's up there with his craziest movies. It's even up there with his not-so-crazy movies that are still good. So, yeah, if you can track this movie down, watch it. It's worth checking out. If you're a Miike fan, if you're a fan of extreme Japanese cinema or just Asian cinema in general. If you're an otaku. If you're an otaku, (laughs) I mean, you'll love this movie. And it it will satiate your need for seeing some weird ass shit. <laughs> you miss me with that weeaboo shit. Oh yeah, definitely. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, this uh, this resonated on a lot of levels as an anime fan. Yeah, I can see this kind of being an anime in some ways, like like some kind of weird, obscure anime, kind of like Midori Shoujo Subaki. I don't know if you ever heard of that one. Yeah, that's a very obscure underground anime that's really kind of twisted in its own right. It, and it, that has a live action movie of its own. I don't think it's made by Mike, but if, if you're into that sort of thing, yeah, check this movie out. Yeah. Well, it's time to go ahead and start wrapping things up. We'll go ahead what's, and... Uh, what's next from Collateral Cinema, Bo? What's next from Collateral Cinema? I believe we are doing Spawn next. Spawn? Huh? Yeah. The, the 1995, I believe, comic book adaptation. It, it was amongst the, the original comic book movies that came out. All right. You know? I'm excited about that. Yeah, and it's a fun movie in so many ways. I actually legitimately love it. <laughs> it's actually one of my favorite kind of, you know, background movies to put on. Like, if there's just nothing else that I want to watch, I can always just put on Spawn and be kind of entertained by it. So, yeah, look for that very soon. Hopefully, Robert will be there to talk with us about that one, hopefully. And also... I believe we're going to have a promo from them in the middle of this episode. Check out Trial by Error Variety Show. Like I'm probably going to be doing a uh, guest spot on that very soon. Be looking for that. Also, give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Podchaser, but especially Apple Podcasts because that will, along with the algorithms, that will help us kind of move up in the rankings and everything. That will get us get more exposure to the show, and it will help us just grow even more than we have already. You know, we're almost close to 5,000 downloads. So, yes, please, ladies and gentlemen, listen to our back catalog, binge our shit, get us to 5,000 downloads. We, 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 we might even get together some kind of giveaway or something like that if we hit 5,000. Yeah, that sounds nice. Maybe, maybe get some kind of DVD and maybe find some way on Twitter to do a giveaway. We could do that, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And um, listen to Collateral Gaming. Our next episode, which we're recording next week, uh, is going to be Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. If you're not listening to Collateral Gaming, uh, that's Dakota's and my show. We focus on video games. Um, You've got the same uh, boyish charms and... uh, (laughs) Yeah, the show needs a little more love, honestly, man. We need more people listening to them. Like, give them a a five-star review as well. Seriously, do it. Yeah, give them five-star reviews all the way through. But um, we're also looking into um, bringing some more hosts onto the show. It's going to be awesome. Expanding our roster and uh, having some more guests on, maybe changing up the format 
uh, next season. I've got some things in mind to kind of ramp things up, but uh, we'll we'll be excited to talk more about that later. Yeah, and there's probably going to be some interesting things in the works for season four of Collateral Cinema. I'm thinking even some topical episodes, maybe. Yeah, like maybe some top ten list or something like that. I think we gotta shake things up. Yeah, sh- shake things up a little bit, you know. Analyzing movies is fun, you know, but I mean, there's some other topics that we can talk about cinematic wise. You shake know? things up, k- k- kind of like how we did jerk with, them off with collateral the jizz. <laughs> oh my god! Shut the fuck god up! God damn it, man! God damn it! <laughs> god damn it, Ash! Everybody, like, t- tweet at Ash. God damn it, Ash! <laughs> Just god damn it, Ash! Well, did they know? We've been using this uh, the duration of this entire podcast to jizz in a cup. Oh my god! Taking turns and uh, you, need, you need to be canceled. Yeah, whoever, you, you, whoever you speaks, need to be canceled, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly, whoever that, that speaks last like, has to drink the, the jizz. That sounds like some serious Reddit shit. That's what that, that sounds like. One of those weird Reddit horror stories that you hear. I guess about. we're not talking then. Yeah, no kidding. We're not talking at all. God damn it, Ash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, Dakota is out of here now. Dakota, get back here. Damn it. Well, anyway, I guess we finally drove Dakota from the studio. <laughs> but yeah, you can find Collateral Cinema on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, iTunes, Chill Lover Radio, and wherever else you get your podcasts. And look at us on YouTube as well. We need more views and subscribers on YouTube. So yeah. check us out. We're probably going to have some videos coming soon. Check out our Patreon where we have full length film commentaries for movies like Fire in the Sky and Freddy Got Fingered and The Room. Seriously, I, help, I, I put those together for y'all. So watch them, please. Yeah. I and mean, you got to have The Room. I it's mean, also my debut on this podcast was The Room uh, commentary. The Room commentary. So definitely come in there, say, oh, hi, Mark, and watch the movie with the commentary. Ding. So, a lot of fun. Yeah, there you go. Ding. We finally got it's late in the episode, but we got our room reference. That doesn't count. Oh, come on. Uh, give it to you're, me. you're just being it's a tough. pessimist, Dakota. You know what? Don't plan too much. It may not come out right. Yeah. There you you become a patron on Patreon. We, we start at uh, $1 tiers. Help support the show. Like Between that and the five star reviews, that'll help us grow tremendously. With that said, we're going to go ahead and get on out of here. I'm Bo Maddox. I'm Ashley Chancellor, and that's Tip Dick Chancellor. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that, fine. That, that, that's fine. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and Dakota Chancellor. I'll, I'll let you get away with it this time. It's okay. <laughs> I remember that one. Ladies and gentlemen, we are out. See you next episode. Drink my cum, Bo. Oh, my God. We are so going to get taken off of Apple Podcasts. God damn it. <laughs> Laters, everybody. Don't pay attention to them.
私をよそにくつろぎ切ったあなたは空ばかり眺めてる空ばかり眺めてる少し離れてただ横にいればいい Lateral Cinema is an L Company production. All music and movie clips are owned by the respective creators and are used for educational purposes only. Please don't sue us. We're poor.